a few years ago. There was a distraught grandmother who approached me and asked if I had heard of the words of an old-time nursery rhyme had been changed. You know the one. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That's the one I knew growing up. But I told her, yes, that I do know the change had taken place because it had been there as a change for my boys. And in case you're not aware, the new version ends with, and I pray that you guide me through the night and wake me with the morning light. This parishioner's question got me thinking about the prayer and its need for change. And I remember how as a child that bedtime prayer terrorized me every night after I recited it while kneeling in my grandmother's side. She would switch off the lights and I would climb into bed and vainly try to stay awake. Stay awake because I was afraid to die in the midst of my sleep. Finally, the tiredness would overcome me and I had no choice but to commend myself to the care of Almighty God. In the time of Jesus and long before, Jewish children would pray the words of Psalm 31 before their bedtime. We find it even in our own services of Compline. In part it says, In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be my rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. In all four Gospels, we have Jesus speaking to people. And from the cross, our Savior utters words of forgiveness to those who taunted and crucified Him. Words of promised salvation to a fellow sufferer on the cross beside Him. Words of familial care to His mother and to His friend. Words of desertion to God. Words of physical pain to the soldiers. Words of triumph to the world. And now, with his last breath, with all the strength that he can muster, the one that I hold dear, as he prays words of commitment to his heavenly Father, where it's described as a loud voice, and he says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus had done all he could. He could do no more. In fact, he did not need to do more. He had accomplished his mission. He could die in the comfort of his heavenly Father's arms. So Jesus prayed that familiar bedtime prayer, one that spoke of God's redemption, one that offered God's hope, one that proclaimed God's victory. Oh, but you and I, we still worry and we still fret. We ponder and we plan. We agonize over the trivial and we worry about the insignificant rather than doing all that we can, what we can, no less than we can. For it's then, and it's only then, that we find that we have no recourse but to give our efforts over to God, to give ourselves to God's care, to allow ourselves to find comfort in the arms of our Heavenly Father, 
No longer need we fear falling asleep. No longer shall we fear death. For it is our Heavenly Father, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, that we finally commend our spirits. In his agony, Jesus prayed a familiar bedtime prayer to the Heavenly Father. And on the cross, this was not a gasping words of defeat and disappointment, but triumphal, powerful words of contentment and peace. For now, for you and me, we don't have to wait until our dying day to say these words. Let us pray those words whenever we are troubled, whenever we worry threatens to consume us. Let us pray, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let us pray them whenever we are faced with problems that defy solution. When we're caught between a rock and a hard place. Let us pray them whenever a doubt casts a shadow across our faith, whenever we are tempted to wonder whether God exists, whenever we doubt that God loves us. Let us pray those words today as we gather here to see Christ on the cross when we find ourselves outraged that anyone would treat Jesus in such a way, when we ask, why did He have to die? Let us pray, Father, into Your hands I commend my spirit. Because when we place ourselves in God's hands, God will hold us, comfort us, strengthen us, lift us up. God will give us life. The meaning of Good Friday is with God's help, it isn't over until it's over. Where there's a cross we can anticipate that there will also be an open tomb. Where there is darkness, we can anticipate that God will bring us light. But now, I go getting ahead of the story. So let me close by saying, to be continued. Come back tomorrow night and hear Miss Dorothy Celebrate the rest of the story.